Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Here is a Grundy Farb Generator. So that means it's a color generator FG7TSPLL. And I think this PLL is because the RF oscillator, because it's also it also got this RF output, RF, um, uh, yeah, video, audio uh, modulator. And that one is completely digital with PLL. It can do channels or frequency inputs and all that kind of things. So all that is uh, pretty neat. Of course, we've got all the standard uh, color bars and uh, color test uh, signals. Uh, yeah, the checkerboard and the lines and all that kind of things. We've got a circle. We can have video level or calibrated video level. I was unfortunately told this one is not working or at least uh, should have some kind of problems. So definitely I need to open and inspect and uh, see if I can repair it before we can start play with this. It looks a lot like the Philips I played with a few days ago. I mean, it got almost the same features both on the front and on the back. So uh, I guess they are more or less the same age. This one should be from 1986, 87. We've got the RGB subcarrier, some trigger, audio, component, SCART connector. I don't know who copied who, but <laughs> I mean, the, the whole design looks all more or less almost like the Philips one. What the heck? So. Oh, there's a little switch down there. And they soldered these to keep the secret in there, or just to make it good, stable shield. I see some crystals and some more hidden switches, and all the trimmers and such. Of course, I will take out all the boards and do a more deep going visual inspection and we got a big front board with some flat cables and we got some uh, nice connectors here so you can easily pull everything apart different types of connectors mm, yeah well well i haven't yet figured out what is the point with this handle it's just loosey loose like that so you can't yeah, I don't know what is the idea, because why can't you lock it so you can have it standing at a nice angle? That's not what it's supposed to do. And RGB outputs, output. Ah, so all the output drivers and stuff is located right here. And the power supply at the back. I didn't see any leaked capacitors or anything nasty so far. Huge transformer. And this... <laughs> How nice. It's... I mean, what the... It really contains a lot of electronics. It's amazing. Where's the digital? Oh, here we got some more fancy smancy parts. I was expecting a little CPU and EEPROMs and stuff like that to uh, to make the graphics. Probably we'll have all the fancy smancy electronics uh, here at the top. Well, I've got a little ESD sticker there. So um, yeah, maybe this is where all the cool stuff is. And I think I need to get here, I need to take the whole thing apart and get in here and clean, because here is my main problem. And look at the corrosion, it's all the way under and all over the place. So here is a back, back up battery. Oh no, this is bad. 
that's definitely why you don't turn on old stuff but you open and do a good careful visual inspection so that was really easy to take out the front is quite a service uh, friendly design so this yeah so so far i'm quite happy but i'm not happy about this the battery leakage and and the amount of acid i mean i don't know if you can see the way that it did damage even down here down there in this connector we got corrosion see all the way down there as well and this is only that side of the board maybe it's maybe ooh, we got some vs or no those are sold I think. okay so we don't have any open vs in this area but there's definitely oh yo yo a big problem here so here is another little suggestion for you when you need to take out a board like this and work on this it this can take a little bit of time maybe a few days and maybe i get interrupted with something else i need to be able to remember where to solder this wire so that's why i add those little permanent markers to indicate where to do that and now i can desolder this and uh, continue my work and not be afraid of forgetting important so things what is out and as you can see here it is also on the front side i did not expect it to be this bad but there is actually maybe a little bit luck in this because most of all the bad stuff here is where i can reach it and where i can clean it right see it's not under stuff here and it's not under that one it's nicely there see, it seems like it's not inside this switch and then it just goes here and a little bit in that connector here so i mean so far i'm not super sad but of course it's a lot of work but i think i can fix this by the way i was right about the CPU location so this is of course where we have all the software and all the fancy things located and I believe this is our brain the 6802 and that one is probably the interface chip 6821 right we got some more interface chips right there tons of these to interface to this and that all over the place oh yeah let's see how uh, how fast this one goes Ooh, it's uh, four megahertz it's actually a smart layout here you can't plug it in wrong right so far so good so i think this one is the positive or these two safe not so much safe how old is this why isn't there written any date so the entire infected has been removed and cleaned away as much as i could i will of course add a new layer of varnish to protect everything here still looks like we have a connection there so that is uh, fine and uh, here on the bottom i can see we have a broken connection here on the ground and then there's this missing track right there the other tracks here under the battery they're still uh, intact so i can easily just add some uh, new varnish here and uh, Hopefully it's gonna work. If not, then uh, well. So after the repair, I always add a thick layer of varnish to protect the area for the future. So here I just added a thin wire like that. So it's really nice and fine. I really hope it works. So now I gotta put 
all this back together. So now I'm done with all the restore, I think. I want to go and have a little look. Maybe I can find another capacitor or something I need to fix. Look at that one. So the EEPROM here, I bet that is the graphics for the different um, pictures. We got some filters here for some of the outputs. It's probably creating the picture right here. And here's the little oscillator that's running the playback from that memory. And the next module left of that one is our color burst. Because look at that, here is a 4.43. That is the color burst for a uh, PAL. And I bet that is a... Um... Okay, so this is the distance to audio crystal. A little bit uh, weird. Or maybe this is how it's uh, generating the lines. Because we have here a uh, counter that's doing all the different lines and fields and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's what it's doing. You can see all the different uh, NCSC options here as well. So it's a uh, hard wire or your solder into the mode you want. And then, yeah, you don't change it back and forward every day anyway. So another good thing about this instrument is the different connectors down there. You see the distance and the type of connectors. See again here, different types and different spacing. So I bet you can't take and uh, swap those modules around. So if you pull them all out and swap them on your table, the only way to put them in is the right way. And I'm still inspecting for leaking capacitors and I don't find any at all, no matter what I do and where I look. So I might as well just uh, show you the different modules and the only thing that i'm a little bit sad about in this unit that's the the naming down here for all the different modules this just don't make sense for anybody uh, who is not super familiar with this and i haven't got the schematics or anything like that so what is mcv10 yeah it's just this thingy and then there's a little add-on. So the add-on board here is the component output. And the, the other board is obviously composite uh, video, right? Because a component is made from composite and uh, the color bursts and uh, something like that, right? That is why you see all only a few inputs here. And then you have the component output, easy peasy. Then... The next module here, see it's the MCO, whatever that is, just some uh, analog uh, stuff. It could have been a lot easier if they just written a few nice keywords about what kind of cool thing this is. Because then, you know, if when something don't work, we know where to look, right? And what is the next? This is MCM. Okay, here we got some different uh, filters, and we also got uh, yeah some some higher speed stuff that is mixed. I don't know exactly what is going on here on that one. To be honest, a lot of uh, solder options. That's definitely for the different uh, PAL and NTSC modes. And the last one here is uh, MCD. I think this is a digital. This one is, of course, doing uh, some line counts. You can see here the different lines. But a lot of stuff is really done in ICs. Tons of counters and multiplexers and switches and flip-flops and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of analog uh, circuits. And uh, I think the design here is uh, from 1987. Uh, but a lot of the chips... They are from uh, 92. See, you can hear this whole board here on 91 or 92. So it's more or less the highest date tells us the age, right? So I think I will change my um, yeah, my age of this unit to uh, 90, 92. So after this corrosion repair, I think I'm ready to 
power it up and this is mains in and that seems to be working and look at that we don't have any thing going on here and probably because i'm not running with the rf output at the moment right so if i do where's my color bar okay we got some of the some of the outputs seems to be working aha uh -huh. so color where the heck is my hmm we have a so this is a I don't have any how annoying okay here we go so all that is also uh, working so far we can mono stereo la 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 we've got all the different things going on here for my we can also going channels la 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 no we cannot so what clear ah so that is in channel or we are in frequency one two no how do you clear this fantastic i think i was able to figure this out so this one is doing the color color bars right and then this is doing a fixed color so that is how it works and that will be the but you can't seems to combine them that is not working and multiburst that is for the frequencies and uh, then you have to circle is not working wide is working the dots the checkerboards and the lines pal is off then what ah what the heck so when pal is off then you can combine that is some weird stuff and then if you combine no well well i learned something today so if you ooh, that is funky okay so you have to really weird i haven't yet figured out what is this is doing so we got some sources here and this this is all the german tv station aird zdf and so on i think that is really funny but that's probably um settings for the different uh, audio or something I, I just don't understand exactly what is that what is that is doing yeah whatever and then you can no you cannot pal off and then you can no oh, now you can Hmm, you got a little poltergeist in this unit. But anyway, I think I did solve all the problems and this fantastic unit is back to life. And that is the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell all your friends. Send some links, okay? See ya. Bye.